Hi, I'm Janae, and welcome to Challenge Chat, week three. One of the challenges we are doing for 2020 is found in the book, Less Stuff, More Life by Amy Marion. And the other challenge is by Taylor Flannery, the 52 week organized home challenge. The links are below in the description. Hi, I'm Janae and I teach productivity that sticks. If you're interested in planning your perfect life, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. So let's follow up on week two. Our challenges were to eat breakfast and to declutter the rest of the kitchen, basically. The counters, the cabinets, and the drawers. How did you do? Did you take a bunch of stuff to donations? Let me know. The first challenge for this week is to lower your voice. Now I did something called a No Yell November just a couple of months ago, and Megan Roundy headed up this group. Megan, I'm sorry I don't remember your channel name, but she is fantastic if you need some advice on how to rein in, because if you have a lot of kids and you have a big family, the house is loud, okay? raising your voice it's like oh yeah mom really means it now that she's yelling you need to try to get them to pay attention when you're not yelling and it's so hard when the house is loud I said even if you're not getting angry during the month of November I wore a little bracelet like this that served as a visual reminder that I needed to pay attention to make sure that my voice was quieter. I freak the kids out sometimes now when I'll be whispering things and they'll see my mouth moving but they won't hear so then all of a sudden things get quiet and they start listening but it takes a lot of practice when you're letting them get your triggers so I have gotten a whole lot better at that by going through Megan's challenge and she's got so many helpful videos that she's published on her channel I suggest you go watch that if you need a little help in this area so our house declutter challenge starts with the pantry. Let me read through our challenges for this week. Start and eat from the pantry and freezer challenge. I've actually done that this month. Most of the things that we are eating are from the pantry and freezer. There are only three or four recipes that we're using that we needed to buy some extra meat for. We needed to clean out our freezer because March is frozen food month, I believe, and that's when everything goes on sale. So you want a fairly clean freezer for when that happens. Declutter shelf-stable food from pantry or cupboard shelves. Declutter and organize canned food. Those are part of our pantry. Declutter and organize spices. Also in my house, part of my pantry, Donate food to a food pantry if you have any that's about to expire or that you know you're not going to use. I put those on the shelf here to see what I do with them. Stay tuned. Next is declutter and organize bakeware. Bonus mission is fresh produce storage. And lastly, declutter kitchen cabinet shelves. So I assume this means any kitchen shelves that you're using for food storage rather than just bakeware and dishes and things. Okay guys, time to declutter. Off to the pound. Let's go. Okay, maybe not. So I thought I would walk you through my pantry decluttering here. Right now I am starting with my produce bins. I've got onions and potatoes and I will put squash in here. I think these are from Alpha. They are mesh drawers. They work wonderfully for storing these and I'll pull it out too put some other stuff on. Now here I've got all sorts of sprinkles that my kids have pulled out so I'll be putting those back in with my cake decorations and I'm checking through my dry goods area getting all of the flour and different types of you know different types of flowers in there I'd make a lot of gluten-free things and I prefer of course to have them sealed. Here I have someone that's opened some freeze-dried blueberries. I find that the freeze-dried items are always better if you put them back into a sealed bag inside before you put them back into the can. It keeps them fresher longer. I've got some larger bulk storage as well. I believe I have a new bag of rice that I'll be putting in here. We prefer sushi rice, so I get those in bulk. 
and I had a little tiny bag of flour. I don't use it very much, but I put it in my bulk storage. Here I need to open a new bin of sugar, so I'm doing that. I like to have my barrel opener very handy. I hate having the barrels and not being able to open them. <laughs> Again, I don't use the sugar much, but here it is if I need it. Next, I'm organizing my cereal a little bit and refilling the containers. I need to open a new can of powdered milk and put it into my container. Hi Valentine. And of course I dumped milk everywhere. I think that's probably why Valentine left. Now we have Patty checking it out. A little bit more of the can organization. Oh, gotta hydrate. My kids like ramen and spicy noodles, so I'm just putting all those in one bin. You'll see how I put that can of green beans up there. There's also some french fried onions. This is all stuff that we don't eat. You see, we have home canned green beans that we use, and we don't eat a lot of the other things. So what I'm doing there is I put everything on that shelf that we would donate at some point. So what I plan on doing, since we have some potlucks coming up, I will use these in some dishes to take. I mean, pumpkin pie is really popular, and of course the green bean casserole. I'll just throw it all together and it'll get munched up without a problem. Otherwise, I would just take it to our food pantry. That Honeyville Almond Blanche flour is the best almond flour that I have found. I do buy that on Amazon. I've got a lot of M&M containers. Yes, we like M&Ms here. So I tend to put a lot of my dry goods in those M&M containers. The dry goods that tend to stay in packages rather in containers, I make sure that they go into the pantry. I have curious kitties that like to chew on packages, so I don't want them in there. Here is my pasta container. Yes, we have a lot of pasta that's half gluten-free, half not. <laughs> Looks like it's mostly gluten-free in that particular box. It's becoming harder to find, so I've had to order it on Amazon recently as well. And I've got loads and loads of macaroni noodles. That's what's in those three larger Tupperware containers in the bottom of my pantry there. So I'm refilling one of my little M&M containers that I put up there at the top. Again, more packaged goods going into the closet pantry there. Of course, the xylitol definitely goes into the pantry. Xylitol is poisonous to cats and dogs. Refilling my collagen gelatin for my bulletproof hot chocolate. This is a snack basket. The things that I like to keep away from the kids, I'll put them in the basket and put it way up there.
filling my cornstarch. I had this bright idea. <laughs> I was going to put it in a small container that kind of backfired and I dumped it everywhere. Of course, the cats thought that was a loads of fun. Of course, you can't see it here, but the cats just had a really good time with all that stuff I dumped on the floor. And I'm organizing my spices a little bit. We go through a lot of spices, so these don't tend to get very old. We make a lot of homemade ramen. So these are dried cloudier mushrooms, and then my favorite dried seaweed. I use a handful of each when I'm making homemade ramen. My travel spices up there in the corner. And some smaller spice packets that need to be sorted through. I think those were sesame seeds I found in there and I put those in the fridge. And the extra containers for snacks for the kids, usually for church, I like to have those all in one spot. And some canned good organization here. I like to can my own tomatoes, but we did not manage to do that this last year. So we still have some diced tomatoes and tomato juice here. And of course, beans. I have a lot of dried beans, but I prefer to use canned kidney beans and garbanzo beans. And of course, tuna fish. Other than that, I don't use a lot of goods in the can. I don't store a lot of them anymore. Oh, and canned salmon too. Love that stuff. And a few cans of soup. Oh look, more snacks I've found. And I'm finishing cleaning up the baskets in my little closet there, along with my pig pegs of rice noodles for my ramen. And a little more straightening up of that large spice shelf. And that's it, admiring the work, and we are done. So that's it for week three. I hope you're doing really well and getting a really good head start on decluttering your home. I know my kitchen is looking so much better. Feels a little better because I know that inside is clean. I can open the cabinets. I can see that it just looks nice and it makes me feel really good. So I hope you're doing well and I will see you for next week's challenge chat. I'm going to actually do a little bit of voiceover on this because right now I have no idea what that means. Words. Allude to lowing, yeah, let's just forget that.